This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. All Hit Radio! To the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome to the X Zone, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell, and for the next Ooh, four hours. I'm going to be your host and your guide as together we cross the time-space continuum to this place that I call the X-Zone. It's a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. It's a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. And we've been coming to you for the last 22 years. And I'll tell you something. We have talked about many things. UFOs, ghosts, hauntings, demons, exorcism, lake monsters... And the list goes on and on and on. However, this hour, I'm going to, you know, there's there's a way that you can actually make $50,000. Do I have your interest? Okay, we're going to be talking to to Chad Lewis. He's the author of Pepe, the Lake Monster of the Mississippi River. Now, um, now that summer is finally here, it's time to plan that vacation. So grab your bathing suit and fishing pole and head out to... Search a mysterious U.S. serpent, a serpent that also happens to have a $50,000 reward for its capture. Now, in Chad's newest book, it takes an in-depth look into the legend of the creature that locals call Pepe, a mysterious serpent that is said to inhabit Lake Pepin and the Mississippi River. Joining me now is Chad Lewis, and he's going to tell us much more about Pepe, the lake monster of the Mississippi River. And Chad, welcome to the X-Zone. Hey, thank you for having me. Chad, where does your interest in the strange, the weird, the bizarre, and lake monsters come from? I blame it on my home state of Wisconsin. Uh Because when I grew up, I grew up not too far from one of the three UFO capitals of the world that our state claims to have. And when I was in high school, I heard about all these people seeing UFOs in a nearby town. Mm -hmm. I was just about to go off to college to study psychology. So I I traveled to the town and started interviewing people about what they were seeing in the sky. And then throughout my career studying psychology, I started looking at what makes people believe in the strange and unusual. And I started lecturing on my findings very seriously statistical oriented stuff very boring you're glad you weren't there but people in the audience that were there they'd come up after the program and say could you help me i think my home's haunted or Mm. i saw something in the woods i can't explain could you help me investigate so it really just blossomed from there tell me when it comes to ufos why hasn't there been that all-inclusive proof yet that ufos are real why do we get these grainy pictures why do we get these uh, non-credible sounding reports. What's the story behind the story when it comes to UFOs, in your opinion? Well, I think it's the same thing that plagues a lot of different paranormal activity is mm-hmm. that the grainy photos, the really bad video, the uh, crackpots who come out and report some of this. But I think that over the years, what I found is more questions than answers investigating my mm-hmm. first UFO case 20-some years ago, you know, I'm still left with more questions. Every time I think I get a theory to explain away something, I get a new case that puts me right back to square one. But I receive that question a lot, not only with UFOs, 
where's the proof on Bigfoot mm-hmm. or sea serpents or why doesn't somebody have a indisputable proof of a haunting or a ghost? And, you know, it's very frustrating, as you know, in the, the field that when you're researching something that you can't actually prove or disprove, it gets very frustrating over the years. It certainly does, and I think that with the increased use of the Internet, there are more and more people who, now this is just my opinion, who are wanting to see or experience something so badly that whether or not they have the experience, an experience that is real, man, it goes up on the Internet, and there you have another case. I completely agree, and what I found over the years and through my research is Mm -hmm. that when people go to these places, whether it's a UFO hotspot or a, an alleged haunted area, and they think something's going to happen, it's much more likely that something will happen, whether they create it in their mind or they open themselves up to it. I don't know, but the reports are that when people go somewhere expecting, mm-hmm. it seems to follow format. All right, Chad, stand by. You and I have to take our first break. We'll be back in two minutes. Exxon Nation, our guest this hour is Chad Lewis. And uh, for over two decades, Chad Lewis has traveled the back roads of the world in search of the strange and unusual from tracking vampires in Transylvania to searching for the elusive monster of Loch Ness to trailing the dangerous trails through remote villages of Belize and searching for ghosts in Ireland's haunted castles. Our guest this hour, Chad, has scoured the earth in search of the paranormal. We'll be back on the other side of this commercial break in two minutes, Exo Nation, as we continue talking this hour with Chad Lewis. And when we come back, we're going to be talking about the Mississippi Lake Monster. My name is Rob McConnell. This is the Exxon. Don't go away. Modern Esoteric, Beyond Our Senses by Brad Olson, consummates the lifeology story about where humanity originates. It is the lost continents, the primitive wisdom, the mythos of creation, and the rethinking of ancient history as we are taught in academia. There is much more to the story than what we have been told. As this is the first book in the Esoteric series, Modern Esoteric starts at the beginning of time and accelerates up to this modern age. Future Esoteric is book two in the series and takes a forward-looking position ahead of today with an open and honest examination of the ET issue and various unexplained phenomena. To discover the writings of author Brad Olson, visit www.bradolson.com. That's www.bradolson.com. Named one of the world's greatest psychics, Elizabeth Joyce is now giving readings worldwide via Skype. Elizabeth Joyce is recognized for her clairvoyant ability to help find missing persons, her analysis of dreams, past life regression work, mediumship, and her accurate predictions. Elizabeth has been a frequent guest on the Exxon radio show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, now for several years. For an appointment with Elizabeth Joyce, call 201-934-8986 or Skype at elizabeth.joyce. And for more information, you can always visit Elizabeth Joyce online at www.new-visions.com. a disease that you would like to alleviate through a natural means? Have you been contacted by angels, ghosts, or even extraterrestrials and want to validate these experiences? Or would you simply like to speak with someone who can help you find your life's purpose? I'm Dr. Joseph Mara, and I'm offering my services free of charge for first-time clients contacting me during the month of April. These free consultations include angel card readings, guided meditations, life coaching, and energy healing. If you have always wanted to explore these types of experiences but were skeptical or simply could not afford them, 
then take advantage of this free special offer. Contact me through my website, a guiding light spelled L-I-T-E dot com, to schedule your consultation today. Until then, I offer you love, light, and laughter. Next donation, uh, Chad Lewis is my guest this hour. He's been featured on Discovery Channel's A Haunting, William Shatner's Weird or What, ABC's Scariest Places on Earth, and Monsters and Mysteries in America, along with being a frequent contributor to Ripley's Believe It or Not Radio. He has a master's degree in psychology. He's authored over 17 books on the supernatural and exclusively lectures on his fascinating findings. Now, this is what Chad believes in. The more bizarre the legend, the more likely it is that you will find him, Chad Lewis, there. His website is, uh, let me see, website is www.chadlewisresearch.com. And, Chad, welcome back to the Exxon. And, and I'd love to talk to you, Chad, if we could, this, uh, this segment about Pepe, the lake monster of the Mississippi River. Tell us about Pepe. Certainly. Well, for starters, a lot of people have a little difficulty. It's a lake that's actually on the Mississippi River. Mm -hmm. It's a wide opening, about 22 miles long, nearly two miles wide. It separates the western portion of Wisconsin with the eastern borders of Minnesota. And dating back to the first Native Americans in the area, they believe that the waters are inhabited by some type of unknown sea serpent, if you will. Mm Mm-hmm. Now, now tell me, how frequently is Pepe spotted, and how credible, in your expert opinion, are those sightings? Well, the first sightings that we know of, as I said, the, the mound builders that were there were the first people there. We don't know mm-hmm. much about them, of course. The only way we gather the evidence is looking at their effigy mounds left behind, you know, these sacred burial grounds that are in the shape of animals usually seen best from the sky. Right. But once the Native Americans came in, a lot of the French explorers and fur traders came down and over and encountered them. One of the most famous was Father Louis Hennepin, who in the late 1600s reported seeing a huge serpent as big as a man's leg and seven to eight feet long inside uh, the Mississippi River near Lake Pepin. So we have sightings going back to the 1600s, but... It wasn't until the white pioneers started settling the area that a lot of the newspapers started covering the sightings that took place in the lake. I was just wondering if uh, if the serpent mound that I believe is in Ohio is a part of this Indian legend uh, pertaining to the, the Mississippi Lake monster, Pepe. Yes, there are several of these serpent mounds throughout the Midwest. Mm-hmm. There was one down in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, not too far from Lake Pepin, where, which also is thought to have a, a lake monster. But um, unfortunately, that one was destroyed through you know, modern progression, if you will. Um, but yeah, a lot of these, we wonder if they were just happened to be in a serpent mm-hmm. form or if they were some type of marker or some type of communication that noted the natives interaction with these creatures because in Lake Pepin legend tells that the natives would only use the strongest canoes they could find in the lake and that anytime someone went missing or was knocked over or drowned they blamed it on the Pepe the monster inside Lake Pepin. Wow. How did you discover the legend of Pepe? That's an interesting point because I had been researching other lakes and rivers and streams of sea serpents in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. And during the 1800s, early 1900s, over a dozen of our lakes, rivers, and streams in Wisconsin were thought to be inhabited by these monsters, these lake beasts. And in 2008, while I was researching stuff for a different book, I ran across uh, Larry Nielsen's $50,000 reward for the capture of this creature in Lake Pepin. And I immediately got in contact with Larry, and that's when my research on Pepe began. How many people, to your knowledge, have actually seen Pepe in recent times? 
Yes. 